Neighbors will be pitching in to clean up the C Street neighborhood this weekend. The town clerk's office names Barnstable's best dog. And we get details on parking changes in town with Regulatory Services Director Richard Scally. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. I'm Sarah Mannell. Town Councilor Jen Cullum is hosting an I Love C Street Spring Cleanup Day Sunday. Anyone wanting to help with cleanup efforts can meet at 9 a.m. at C Street Market. Residents are asked to bring gloves and, if they have one, a wagon or wheelbarrow. Following the cleanup, the group will then walk to Keys Beach for a potluck lunch around 11. Residents and business owners will get another chance to weigh in on the revitalization of the east end of Main Street. Director of Growth Management Joanne Miller-Buntage says local input is key to the success of the project. You can join in the discussion Tuesday, June 17th from 5 to 7 at the Heritage House Hotel. Lily, a four-year-old Yorkie from Marston's Mills, has been named Barnstable's best dog. Lily's owner, Tony Leone, was one of more than 50 residents that submitted photos for the contest when they registered their dogs last month. If you haven't yet stopped by the town clerk's office to register your dog, there is still time. All you need is proof of a current rabies vaccination, spay or neuter certificate if it's not already on file, and your payment. The town clerk's office is open weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Well, it's a big week for Barnstable High School seniors. Monday night, uh, the school held its annual Senior Awards Recognition Dinner. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Mary Schakowsky says the dinner is a great way to acknowledge the many accomplishments of the senior class. Also, this Saturday is graduation. The ceremony will be held at 2 p.m. on the football field. There will be a few parking changes this summer in Hyannis. This week, I talked about the changes with Director of Regulatory Services Richard Scally. We share that interview with you now. Good morning, everyone. You are watching Barnesable this morning. Uh, joining me now on the phone is Director of Regulatory Services, Richard Scally. Good morning, Richard. How are you? Good morning, Sarah. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Wanted to talk about uh, an issue today that is really important uh, to the town of Barnesable. Uh, Want to talk a little bit about parking, if we can. A couple changes are taking place uh, soon or have taken place already. Let's talk first about the new meters at Bismore Park. Yes. Um, well, after many years of uh, the pay stations that are down there. We've uh, added or uh, purchased uh, four new pay stations down at Bismore, and they went in oh, about a week, two, about two weeks ago, and they are new and updated and have um, some exciting new functions that go along with them. Um, the uh, stations are, are, are more uh, uh, easy to, easier to read, easier to use, uh, much more accessible. Uh, we've also... Um, uh, added uh, awnings to the um, location so there the sunlight is uh, blocks the the glare and uh, we find that they're going to be much more efficient for people down there who want to use um, the Bismore lot. Now and I think these meters are actually uh, sort of new in the technology that they provide. You could actually I think use an app to uh, pay for your parking. Yes, well you can still use your credit card obviously and you still and you still can use coin. It does not take uh, bills. But there is a new, uh, well, it's not that new, but it's like new to us, and a new exciting app which you can get on your cell, and you can pay by cell. So you would be able to pay if you put an hour in and then you want to go into a restaurant and you feel like you want to stay a little bit longer, you just would click onto your app and you'd be able to add time on to, to, your, uh, to your parking space. There's no more pay and display now. It's actually just a matter of getting a receipt out of the machine and uh, you're ready to go at that point, so you don't have to go back to your vehicle and put it on your dashboard at all. So convenient. Uh, such amazing things technology can do for us to mm. these days. I yeah. uh, also wanted to talk a little bit, but there's an Ocean Street parking lot, and that's actually uh, been free for a while, and it's going to transition now into a paid parking lot. Tell me about why that decision was made. Yes, that lot was uh, quite an eyesore for many, many years, and we, this past year, through DPW, uh, upgraded and paved and numbered the spaces there, there's 64 spaces in that in that lot. 
Um, it, it had been abused as kind of long-term parking for many, many years, people going to the islands or contractors parking there. And uh, that was kind of a misuse of the actual lot. So we are now uh, have installed a pay station, although it's not operational yet. We have a couple of kinks to work out with the uh, uh, local um, abutters to the, to the lot. Um, uh, it does have a new awning over the machi- machine, the same as the machine down at, at Bismore. And um, uh, the ultimate goal is for it to be a pay-for lot for those uh, with the maximum of up to, up to six hours, uh, much like the Bismore lot. Now, do you know, Richard, can you tell me when you think that might uh, move over and, and start using that machine, the new machine? We're trying to, yes, it will, ho- hopefully sooner than later. We're trying to work out the details with the abutters, immediate abutters. There's a proposal that we have before the town manager to allow immediate abutters to purchase a resident sticker or an employee sticker or an owner sticker for immediate abutters, and uh, they would pay a fee per year. The suggested fee has been seventy-five to eighty dollars, and that they, we kind of use this as a test case, as a um, as a sample to see how this works. For those uh, that would have that sticker, they would go in. If there's a space available, they would be able to park, and they would not get a ticket uh, if they paid for that sticker. And hopefully, that will limit the the long-term use of that, but give the benefit to the immediate abutters who may have used that lot in the in the past. Great. I also wanted to talk to you about another proposal that uh, could be moving forward soon. I know that there are several spots on Main Street along the street that are actually 20-minute parking spaces. You're in talks right now to change that to lengthen that amount of time. Talk to me about how this uh, came to be. Sure. We Well, for a number of years, it, there's been mostly two-hour parking on Main Street, and then there's four or five different sections that are 20-minute parking which is supposed to be a benefit to the store owners there to have people move along quickly, go in, get an ice cream, go in and buy something, and then leave. Uh, The the recent uh, suggestion is that we no longer need those and that we need more uh, long-term parking. So we have proposed that we eliminate the majority of the 20-minute spaces, except for the post office. The post office will keep the 20-minute spaces because that's very quick in and out, usually, uh, for people going into the the, uh, post office. And uh, hopefully the 20-minute signs will be down soon. It has to go through a town manager regulation to, in order for that to be changed. Uh, but that's the consensus right now is that we don't need those anymore for people who want to be uh, shopping or being uh, eating along Main Street. Great. Give them an opportunity to stay a little bit longer there on Main Street. Also wanted to talk a little bit, Richard, if we can, about enforcement and fines. How do you guys enforce uh, these traffic uh, areas around town? Well, we have... Uh, Parking enforcement uh, personnel who are, we have one full time person, and then we, in the summertime, as it gets to be April, May, we hire six more part time people. We now have the handheld machines to be able to ticket uh, the violations. And uh, we go along Main Street, uh, Bismore, to the malls and to the commuter lot, and we also enforce handicapped spaces and uh, uh, fire lanes as well. We're also at the beaches. And uh, this year, our proposal has been ramped up to include longer-term enforcement of beaches and ramps. Uh, We haven't had a lot of staff being able to do that long-term or for longer periods of time. And this year, we're going to be increasing that, that monitoring. Great. And then there's a few different ways, actually, that uh, residents can pay a fine if they do get a fine. I think they can actually pay online as well as uh, stop mm-hmm. by 200 Main. Is that correct? Yes, they can pay by mail, obviously, by mailing it into our vendor, which is uh, Complus. And they happen to be located in Tarrytown, but that's just their processing center. Uh, they can also come in or pay their fine at 200 Main Street. They can mail it in or they can come, in t- come to our window. Or they can pay it online. Uh, by credit card, but there is a small fee for that to be able to do that online um, by our by our website. And uh, so it's very convenient and accessible, and we make it as easy as possible for anybody to pay their their violation. Great, Richard. We really appreciate uh, you chatting with us today, and look forward to chatting with you uh, sometime in the future. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. You. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour long news program, Barnstable, this morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will talk to CCRTA Administrator Tom Kerr about the success of the Cape Flyer, and we'll talk to Town Council President Jessica Rapp Grissetti. She's going to give us a sneak peek of what's on the agenda for tomorrow night's Town Council meeting. For Barnstable today, I'm Sarah Mannell.